This is the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with your host, Vicki Davis. Today's sponsor is Microsoft Education. Stay tuned at the show's end to learn more about their artificial intelligence course for educators. I'm so excited today to be talking with Mary Howard. She's finishing up her 20th year of teaching sixth grade ELA in science. She's from Grand Island, New York. And Mary, we were just counting the episodes you've been on. So you may be my first fourth time guest. And you had episode 293, where we talked about Open Sim back in 2018. We had episode 523, where we talked about augmented reality and your presentation at ISTE 2019. Then episode 667, we talked about boom cards, which is something super awesome. And then now you have, so you've won a lot of awards, the 2018 International Society for Technology and Education's Virtual Pioneer of the Year, Silver Presidential Volunteer Service Award, um, finalist for New York State Teacher of the Year 2018 and 2020. And you've recently authored the book, Artificial Intelligence to Streamline Your Teacher Life, the Chat GPT Guide for Educators. So you just keep innovating, don't you, Mary? I keep trying. It's been quite a journey, that's for sure. So when you talk about streamlining your teacher life, how can teachers streamline their life using ChatGPT or this is being built into a lot of other tools? So a chat bot type AI tool. It really is. If you haven't heard of chat GPT or artificial intelligence, I'd be shocked because it is everywhere and it's growing really fast. Uh, my stance at this point is it can do so much for educators just to help them do their job from writing reading passages to leveling reading passages to writing worksheets and app smashing it with other tools to do so many different types of activities in the classroom. It really is probably the best thing I think to help teachers do their jobs that has come out in a really long time. At a good time. We know educators are leaving the profession in droves. They're overworked. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the thing that can keep us in the profession. So when you talk about app smashing, that's of course when you combine one app with another and you start using together in new novel ways. What are some of your favorite apps to smash with the chat GPT chat tool. It has come in so handy. I'm currently at the end of my school year as we're recording this. You get those last minute panic attacks, right? Like, ah, I need a, a gim kit game. And so you can use it to do things like brainstorming a list of words or vocabulary, and you can export them out of there and you can pop them into, you know, a gim kit game or a quizzes game or a Kahoot game. And so it will do that for you, which is really quite amazing. You have to know how to tweak it a little bit to get it to happen, but I love it. I love that it's a couple pushes of a button and I have an interactive to do with the students. Yes, because it will export to CSV and I'm sure you have blog posts and I have a blog post too on how to pull that out and, you know, teachers, their jaw drops when they see, oh my goodness, it can generate. Now we still want to urge everybody, you are ultimately the human intelligence, the HI that needs to go with the AI because you've got to check it and not just take it and throw it in there. So what other uh, tools can you app smash? You've got all the quizzes and all those types of tools. Any others? Um, I've been doing crossword puzzles and I know that's not pretty, you know, it doesn't seem super high tech, right? But, you know, just things like that, those last minute crossword puzzles and word searches and things like that. It's been really great for those two. So ChatGPT will make a crossword puzzle and a word search? It's an app smash, right? So you can generate the vocabulary that you need for the crossword grab it out of there and you can toss it into discoverypuzzlemaker.com and you've got yourself a crossword puzzle. And then word search, what do you paste to get that to work? Actually, it's the same site. It's a digital word search creator that's part of the Discovery Puzzle Maker. You've just taught me something I did not know, Mary. Thank you. That's awesome. That'll have to go in my 80 days of AI and HI. That's something new. So let's talk hands-on for a minute. So you've got a lot of expertise in augmented reality. You got a lot of expertise in virtual reality. Artificial intelligence is going to come to everything. So there's a great book called The Future's Faster Than You Think by Peter Diamandis. And he says in that book, change becomes exponential when artificial intelligence jumps on the back of existing technologies. That's why he's predicting that the next 10 years will be a hundred years worth of technology change. So when AI jumps on the back of virtual reality in the classroom, let's just use your imagination for a second. What do you think that's going to mean for us as teachers when we have VR plus AI working together in these simulations and experiences for kids? What do you 
think you could do or that we'll be able to do. Let's imagine we've got an augmented reality uh, heart and you're holding the merge cube or something in your hand and it's a heart. And this has always been, I think, the reason augmented reality doesn't get adopted by educators because it's like, okay, that's great. And that's really cool looking, but how do I teach with it? And so in comes AI, and I think this is where AI will be able to support us because it can give you those ideas, just like it can generate that lesson plan when you're stumped sometimes, you know, okay, ChatGPT, write me a lesson plan on the states of matter. Well, now you have an interactive, and here it is showing the three states of matter in augmented reality, and you say, okay, AI, how can I use this interactive instructionally? So I think in my head, that's kind of where I think the two will marry. I could see, like you said, the heart. And then what if AI could say point to a ventricle and then you could point to that part and it could actually know if you're pointing to the correct place, right? So you could actually have a hands-on assessment that used to, you'd have to do one at a time at your desk. Is that imagining things too far? Do you think that that's something AI might could help us do? I can see how that that would be something, or even just the resources to go along with it. Sometimes it's the back end, it's the thinking end where we get stuck as teachers, especially with augmented reality. Um, you know, when I first discovered some of those tools, I started making scavenger hunts. They were fantastic. The kids loved them and it was useful, but that takes time. You know, as a resource developer, we know it takes time and some of it's just let's alleviate that time. Or I want to teach these parts of the skeleton. Here's my picture of the skeleton. Overlay these parts onto the skeleton. When we're dealing with 3D space, it's just a new level of complexity versus the quote worksheets and paper in the 2D world that we're used to, right? A good example of that is um, it just Loving augmented reality so much, I have to plug this fun activity that I do. I teach a graphic novel in my ELA classes because I teach both science and ELA. And I used CoSpaces. You're probably familiar with CoSpaces EDU. It's a fantastic um, augmented reality tool and virtual reality tool for that matter. But we took the Merge Cube and we turned it into an augmented reality uh, experience, like an overlay. So I was trying to teach the students the gutter and the panel and you know the inferring spaces that are in a graphic novel page. So they took this Merge Cube and they just put it right into this one panel on the graphic novel and up popped the augmented reality pointing in different spots, you know, saying, this is a gutter, this is a panel. What do you think this character, why do you think this character has a speech bubble decorated in this manner? And so it was a, a really great way to use augmented reality with a graphic novel. That takes time to develop. And I feel like that is where AI could help us. So let's make these things for us. When we start talking about all this change, it's gonna stress some teachers out, right? And you present and you travel and you speak and you see the, teachers are overwhelmed. We already have too much to do. <laughs> we, we've come out of the, the pandemic. You've got academic integrity issues with a lot of the kids. Now it's gotten worse because of tools like ChatGPT or Snapchat AI. So we're seeing kids who are acing our homework and failing our tests. And so we're looking at all this stuff that's got to change. And then they're just going to say, but Mary, this overwhelms me. So what do you tell the teacher who feels overwhelmed about AI that will help them frame it or see it for what it is instead of this fear that seems to be coming from the media? There is a lot of fear. And number one is we can't bury our heads in the sand. It is irresponsible to bury our heads as teachers in the sand because as you said, the, the pace at which this is developing, we have to arm ourselves and prepare ourselves. And there really are two schools of thought, in my opinion. You know, there's the, how is it gonna be used in the classroom, either by students or by teachers, you know, student facing. And then of course there's the behind the scenes. If you wanna ease up your teacher life, adopt it because it really is going to help you ease your teacher life. The student facing side, I think, is where need, we need to be more responsible because we are facing so many, like you said, academic integrity issues. We just had three of them, you know, just last week in my building, three very obvious entire pieces of writing written by students. And here I am in my own building and in my own district preaching, you know, we need to know about AI. And I'm, I'm working with a staff that doesn't want one more thing. And that's, that is the biggest problem. It feels like one more thing, but we can't be irresponsible and try to ignore it because it's not going away. Yeah. And you don't want the kids to get ahead of you. 
I mean, you just have to innovate like a turtle, practice, try new stuff all the time, intentionally set some time aside to learn new things and just understand the world is just changing. It's just another tool, although a very powerful tool. And people like you, Mary, are going to help us move forward. I like this uh, student facing versus teacher facing piece because the teacher facing piece is where you can really get a whole lot of productivity. And we will learn how to do it for our students once we learn how ourselves. So thank you, Mary, for coming on the show. Microsoft has an amazing artificial intelligence course for educators that will help you and your education team have the knowledge you need to understand the best practices for artificial intelligence in schools. AI is changing rapidly and you'll want your team to take advantage of this free course from Microsoft today. Go to aka.ms forward slash AI for educators now. That's aka.ms forward slash AI for educators. Sign up for this free course today so that you're ready to understand and use AI in your school in ways that are safe and work for schools. I highly recommend this free AI course from Microsoft. So sign up today. You've been listening to the 10 Minute Teacher Podcast. If you like this program, you can find more at coolcatteacher.com. If you wish to see more content by Vicki Davis, you can find her on Facebook and Twitter under Cool Cat Teacher. Thank you for listening.